A very good morning to all of you and welcome to the 14th edition of Entrepreneur 2024. And the very first session which we are beginning is about how industry, government and academia can come together to foster the culture of innovation and support our startups, our tech ecosystem at large. And I'm glad that I have a wonderful set of panelists with me. So I'm going to first give the mic to Mr. Subranchu to give a brief about uh, what work NSIC is doing and how he is supporting different startups. Uh, uh, before uh, uh, coming to that topic, a very uh, warm good morning to all of you, my uh, co-panelists and uh, everybody who is present out here. Uh, see, I'll, uh, before, actually I uh, touch upon what NSIC is doing, I'll say, I I'll take the leaf out of uh, uh, mm, what Madam said in the uh, in opening remarks. See, uh, you know, we are all talking about entrepreneurship today and uh, you know, why do we talk about entrepreneurship? Of course, everybody, in, you, all of you are aware, but you know, the, uh, the uh, agriculture, uh, is, which is the largest producer, uh, largest employer of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, people in our country is employing about 50% of the total, uh, you know, working population. 50% is employed by agriculture and the contribution to the GDP by the agriculture sector is 18% roughly. And the uh, large industry sector, the industrial sector, you all uh, you know, know about Industry 4.0, you all know about the AI and ML that is revolutionizing the current industrial scenario. And uh, uh, you know, the incremental employment opportunities in these sectors is also very, very limited. And agriculture, of course, 50% manpower is already engaged, producing only 18%. That, mean, that means there is too much of disguised employment in agriculture, unemployment. So the only thing that, only sector that can provide the employment to the teeming millions is the MSME sector. And when I say MSME sector, it also includes startups because, uh, you know, startups are also a subset of MSME uh, superset. So, uh, uh, you know, second thing is we are today talking about, you know, uh, we, talk, we all speak about innovation. See, innovation is important, definitely it is important. And, uh, you know, as far as latest, uh, you know, publication uh, by the Famer Institute in the United States, it says in the uh, 40s or 50s, human knowledge was getting doubled every 25 years. Every 25 years, this uh, total human knowledge was getting doubled in 25 years. And today, you know, the time span of doubling of human knowledge is not 25 years, but not even 25 hours, it is 12 hours. So, meaning thereby, our students or our workforce will soon be obsolete or getting obsolete possibly every alternate day. You know, our students who are currently in uh, universities or uh, technical institutions, possibly, you know, the job that awaits them, they are not, you know, equipped to handle those jobs. So that is the speed of, uh, you know, change that is happening across the world. So, if this is the this this is the kind of a scenario, where do we stand with innovation and with uh, uh, with entrepreneurship? You know, in a country like ours, when we are talking about innovation, we also have to see that you know we have a dream of making our country 2040 by 2047 a Vixit Bharat. Now, how do you do that? If we are talking about innovation, it is just one part of the story. Innovation. Mostly when it is referred, it is technological innovation. Now, how many technology startups can survive and how many uh, uh, employment they can create? Yes, they are required, they are, they are important, very important. They are very rapid wealth creators and we need wealth uh, in the society so that, you know, the government uh, can, uh, you know, uh, distribute it by way of uh, tax, uh, collecting it by way of taxes or dividends or whatever. But if we have to see take the country to 2047, then, you know, roughly, very roughly, we are today growing at 7%. And, you know, our urban centers, as per 
as per a recent kind of a, um, you know publication it is there growing at roughly 10 to 11 percent and the rural sector is developing at around four percent so the overall country is growing at around seven percent or so if this growth continues for next five years then the disparity that already exists between the rural and urban is going to be further wider by 30 percent at this rate so we need grassroot level innovations. We need wealth creation at the grassroot level. It's not just at the, at the technology startups, but startups who are, you know, taking any idea or even uh, making any improvement in the existing products and processes. In that sense, I'll say that in the, the uh, here comes the role of organizations like say NSIC, etc. See, today when I, I talked about the skill you know, the, the requirement of, uh, um, uh, you know, skilling our workforce. I was discussing with some of the, you know, leading MSME uh, industrialists and they say, we are ready for investment while we are getting BTECs, even, uh, you know, ITIs or diploma holders, we are not getting people for shop floor. We are not having people who can manage the maybe CNC, VNC machines. So how do we, uh, you know, equip our uh, our uh, population with those kind of, uh, you know, uh, um, skill sets so that the industry runs, you know, there, there will be uh, there will be innovation, there will be investment. You know, everybody talks about uh, additional investment, but then who is going to run the show? So, you know, skilling becomes very, very important. You know, NSIC has a, a, a chain of technology centers across the country and, uh, you know, with... Uh, industry, we in in collaboration with the industry, we run programs to skill the uh, skill the, uh, the the workforce, starting from the bare minimum CNC VNC machines to lathe machines to robotics to mechatronics to you know uh, air VR data analytics the uh, EV the uh, solar panels everything everything. So it is very very important because you know as I say that you know our skill sets are getting obsolete every day. And we need skilled manpower. That is, that is number one. And then, creation of enterprise. When you are talking about entrepreneurship, the, how do we create enterprise? Yes, startups are required. In fact, we are uh, very closely working with, uh, um, you know, uh, government and other institutions, with academic institutions. So when we are, growth is something that uh, was uh, told in the opening remarks. You know, we run growth accelerators. You know, today if we want to, you know, create wealth at a rapid pace, we need acceleration programs, we need the growth of the MSMEs to get accelerated. And for that, to fuel that growth, we need growth capital also. So we run the uh, Self-Reliant India Fund of Funds, that is a sovereign fund that is to be invested in the MSMEs, so that it fuels the accelerated growth of the MSMEs. There are a lot many, but uh, uh, during the course of discussion, possibly we can touch upon more. So I rest here. Thank you. Thank you, Shubhranshu. Um, I'll come to you, Professor Muktikan Mishra, I mean, uh, being the founding president of uh, a very uh, new age centric university, which is Centurion. I know that there's a lot of focus on skill based learning, on ground learning, which you have for students. So, can you share more in terms of the kind of innovative environment you are creating for future entrepreneurs? Okay, uh, first thing, good morning to all of you. I think some of you are very sleepy, and please wake up. And the mobile phones can wait for a little while. They can, they can be left untouched. So they also miss you. Normally when people are ignored, people feel also sought after. Like mobile phone also feels very loved when it is left out for, for a while. Um, I know, I think this event, what we are talking about here, she started with empowerment. I actually feel very empowered seeing your ease, which is red color and seats also red color. The color combination has very made me feel too temporarily or transitorily very empowered. The network which you are talking about, the expansion, you are very well networked now because your people visited Centurion and thank you very much for inviting me to be here. A lot of people would now heard Centurion because we are a very, very, very remote rural tribal area university. And uh, Mr. Acharya belongs to my state and he has also not visited us. So we are not least visited, we are very invisible. That's why we have to be innovative. We have no choice. So our innovation is uh, what they have asked me to talk about uh, uh, inclusive. We are not inclusive just, we are also very, very integrated into the education system because you will deal with school dropouts to PhD scholars to people who are not uh, able to talk and hear, but it means speech impaired and hearing impaired ch children. So, uh, and also we, we are deep into the Naxal belt. 
So we have to be, uh, it, it is for our survival. So uh, the uh, innovation is intrinsic into our system. And then we don't innovate everything. We also implement innovations. For example, uh, Telangana um, Agriculture University had a rice. Uh, but they didn't implement, they didn't commercialize. So we bought it and commercialized with 1,400 tribal farmers. And we tried to, but innovation is not just for technology for me. It's uh, actually, I am in this, in this panel, I'm the technologically retarded and retired person. I don't understand technology. Though my half of my life or more than that I spent overseas, technology I have faced, I use technology, but I am not, I can't say that I understand technology. I don't. So we go into social innovation. Companies which we have created within the university ecosystem, we have uh, you know, commercial companies, we have social companies, we have socio-economic com uh, companies. We also, uh, what I otherwise, uh, I, today for today, we, we, we say the impact companies, we, for that you should understand that when I was coming there, I told what we do actually, because of this event, I started thinking actually what we do, is it just commercial venture, or uh, it is just a social venture, or what we do, it's most of the enterprises which we run around 30 plus, within the university ecosystem, uh, that also, that innovation came because most of the industries refused to give our children the internship or the access to the learning. What he's talking about, the CNC machine. We, we had CNC machine 2010. Uh, we invested in 10 to 15 crores. The entire ISRO uh, range of parts we manufacture within us, HAL parts we manufacture within us. Uh, we, we make around 2,000 EVs a year. We sell it, we sell to also Tata's the EVs. We, uh, we, uh, we manufacture 10,000 transformers within the part of the ecosystem. So people who are want to be uh, you know, bit innovative, like, but, but when we want to innovate the further transformer or further the weight loss or what, what reduction or making it lightweight, but we don't get the support from the industry. We can't innovate. So we don't do that. If somebody is doing it, we'll implement it. It's, innovation is not always to create a new thing. How you scale it up also is very important for us. And it's, for us, it is survival. It is nothing to, because you are deep into rural, regional, remote, inaccessible, uh, area. So how do you remain relevant? So relevance is very important for us. Number, number that's, uh, well, I'll just take one more minute. See, uh, the other thing we, everybody is talking, we don't create, we don't try to create job consumers, we try to create job creators. We also don't, we want productive citizens instead, instead of uh, developing what I, I term that as entitled clients of the country. You, we need to have productive citizens of the country. Everybody should think, act, do, Whatever they can contribute, whatever they consume, they are giving back to the universe, giving back to the world. So that's how the, the, your mind innovation is very important also. We must talk about, you know, uh, we talk about design thinking, but we think, we say that think design. So we have a pottery, um, a, a big pottery lab where you create whatever. Clay is the first thing which you can deal with being innovative. You create something which has, con which has got economic, social, personal, family value. Or you can do it paper. We have handmade paper unit where you can go and create something which you can destroy and recreate. We have wood engineering where you can do quote, something like this kind of chair you make, students um, can make it. Our aim was that every student should make its own plate, one chair, one table, one bed, one desk, one bench. Some, to some extent we have succeeded. It's about 5%, 10%. Do students do make various things which they use. But we are far away from where we want to reach. So innovation should be way of life and innovation I define both what is existing, how you scale it up, or you can bring it uh, new products. For recently, we were exporting something to Australia, and Snyder charged us $20,000, $25,000. So our teachers and students have joined hands, and they have brought out the control panel, um, let's say about spending only $5,000. So you, is the innovation? No. We have tried to rework on that. So in, not that every entrepreneur has to start from the scratch. There are many things which university ecosystems, various universities are doing it. But you know, for that, I will suggest people who are already entrepreneurs, people who are aspiring to be entrepreneurs, or people who are even dreaming to be entrepreneurs, should go and collect data what is happening in the world, what is happening around uh, various places. So here I stand, and I will invite you, be our guest, do come, visit us, see what we are doing, and you will also learn from you. You also take something and try to uh, populate it or try to expand it. So that's how also, you know, what we call institutional innovations can happen. From institution to institution, from institution to person, from person to person. So only we talk about B2B, C2C, B2C, all the business. But when I'm talking about the innovation, there is not, no, nobody said B2B innovation. We don't talk about that. What I'm saying is that person to person. So you have a personal social responsibility to populate to scale up whatever is happening to the other place, number one. And number two, when somebody has done something, your learning come also becomes shorter. 
that's uh, and when we are talking about industry collaboration in fact we have industries as consumers we are yet to find industry collaborators that is the truth no industry has time because their bottom line is very important for institutions our bottom line is how much of impact you are having in the society but impact is our bottom line so that we have no choice but to do that but you know the question which uh, they have asked me that industry collaboration still we don't see in large scale uh, which we but the consumers we sell all our products we have heavy duty consumers and they are demanding that's why we improve the quality is improving because the industry is partner First thing our students are learning, second thing our quality is improving. We have to go for NIBL, we also partner with NIS, and, I mean in my early stage. We partner with them, we learn from them, how they are setting up things, they have NIBL labs, we learn from them. So that's the institution institution learning. So innovation can, can come also from institution institution learning. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Muktikant, for sharing the innovative approach you take. And uh, now I come to you, Rahul, and uh, I also want you to touch upon uh, the kind of initiatives you are taking while working with industry. So before talking about uh, the initiatives, what we are doing, I would talk about this office also because many people, they do not know what exactly this office is. So I am representing principal scientific advisor to the government of India and uh, as you must be aware, it's a scientific advisor to the prime minister office. Uh, it comes under PMO and a cabinet secretariat. And uh, this office was started uh, as the first principal scientific advisor when Dr. Abdul Kalam was there. So he was the first principal scientific advisor to the PM and right now we have fourth PSA as a Professor Rajesh Sooth. Uh, overall, the role of this office is to basically advise Prime Minister and the Cabinet for science, technology and innovation intervention for the country. So we make roadmaps. We uh, anticipate challenges for any kind of technology interventions. We have three major divisions. The first is PM Strike, which is Prime Minister Science and Technology Innovation Advisory Council. It is chaired by PSA and all the line ministry secretary and some of the industry members are there. And whatever missions you keep on hearing from government of India, whether it's a green hydrogen mission, semiconductor missions, whether it is an artificial intelligence mission, EV, um, biodiversity, uh, One Health missions, quantum mission recently it has been launched. All these missions get envisaged by this office. They brought different line ministries together and then it is handed over to the relevant line ministries for the implementations of this program. Our division specifically which is called a strategic alliances in this office and it started during the time of COVID where we were looking for different kind of research and innovations which can help us to fight the pandemic. We started reaching out to all the IITs, NITs, triple ITs, ISO, SAMES, IMS, ICMR and lakhs of innovators and startups in the country to get what exactly they can help us with the innovations whether they have ventilators, masks, reagents, testing kits, whatever you have during the time of COVID and we started collecting that and we had taken it to the foundations, industries to support them and I'm happy to share that that time we have actually commercialized 56 technologies. A simple technologies which is lying in the IIT Madras which is making a prefabricated hospital we have just taken them as a modulus housing, the name of the startups, and we have actually set up 52 hospitals in 18 states, all supported by industries, foundations, and philanthropists and HNI at that time. Within three months, having a 30 years of shelf life. The first self-testing kit in India for COVID, it's not coming from any premier institutions in the premier. It's a garage startup, my lab. Everybody might have heard. They just wrote to us and we gave them a NCL Pune, gave them all the supports and that's how we got the first self-testing kits. The reagents which we were importing that time and from South Korea, we understood there are many issues we were facing and we made a consortium of research institutes and startups and MSMEs together and we brought a funding from Rockefeller and Gates Foundation and we indigenized those, those reagents in India and not only indigenized with the help of TCS platform, we had actually uh, exported these reagents to the African countries. So that's how we started and then principal scientific advisor, he said we should not stop here, we should actually go forward. 
and we should focus on all different areas. So our focus is three. One is sustainable development goal, SDGs. So we are talking about the technologies related or which is impacting SDGs. The second is emerging technologies. We, are, we have blockchain, quantum, semiconductor, green hydrogen, telecommunications. The third area which we have is the social impact technologies. So CSR, which is very, very important for the country. And this office had made a change in 2019 in the CSR law, law in Schedule 7, Clause 9, where we said CSR can also be spent on research and innovations, which is aligned to the sustainable development goals. We started working. We got a lot of responses from industries coming forward, and they said we wanted to collaborate. And we were a small team, and we thought we are becoming a bottleneck for the country. So we thought, OK, let's come out with a digital platform. And that's how we have developed a platform called as Manthan. Manthan has been launched two years back by principal scientific advisors, advisors uh, on 15th August 2022, the same day when the Honorable Prime Minister has announced Jay Anusandhan made support to research and innovation as a one of the slogan added to our the national slogan. When we launched this uh, manthan, we thought we should not ask money to the government. Being a government, OK, we should not ask. Let's see what is the response from the industry. And you will see the ma manthan platform has been crowd-funded by industries. Mr. Lakshmi Narayan from Cognizant, Act Grant, Amazon, everybody came forward. And we got a support from the Pan-India Research and Innovation Ecosystem, IITs, IIMs, even the foreign institutes like MIT, Stanford, Harvard. They came forward. UN agencies like UN, UNICEF, UN South-South Corporations, Rockefeller Foundation, Gates Foundation, everybody came together to support and to make this platform so that we have a say from everyone to in this platform. Last two years, it's just in August, we have completed two years. I'm happy to say that we have received 8,125 crores of funding opportunities on this platform. We are able to facilitate 363 MOUs for researchers and startups from this platform. We got 757 opportunities across the globe, starting from Elon Musk XPRIZE Foundations for decarbonization, water scarcity, healthcare, wildlife fire, uh, Gates uh, Foundations, Rockefeller Foundation, Microsoft, Intel, any name you, you feel that which is worth to be there for research and innovation, it is there on the platform. We are working on R&D problem cha uh, 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 challenges. We are bringing innovations where startup has to give all these innovations. We are working on implementation projects. We have set up 15 center of excellences in research institutes, all funded by industries, whether it's a global sanitation technologies. So we are focusing on the technologies where nobody focus. So sanitation technologies where uh, we got funding from Gates Foundation, SDFC Bank, HUL. Everybody through CSR they have funded and we have set up in IIT Palakkad. We have set up Clean Affordable Energy Center of Excellence in IIT Dharwad, funded by Honeywell, Infineon, Shelco Foundation, Lois. We have a Circular Economy Center of Excellence at Terry, funded by ICSA Foundation, Bloomberg, Clean Air Fund, Open Philanthropies had funded air pollution measuring and monitoring technologies at IIT Kanpur and IIT uh, Delhi. We have a Center of Excellence at NIT Patna, funded for AIML skilling, basically. We have a center of ex excellence at IIT Madras for water and wash sanitation. And I'm proud to share this platform has been selected amongst the top eight initiative in the world by any of the government at World Government Summit. And it has been presented to 26 prime minister and president of the world this year I, in February. Even our prime minister was there. So the Manthan is it's a free of cost platform. Our role is to make an ecosystem. Your role is to utilize the ecosystem. Everybody, whether you are a student, whether you are an industry, whether you are a foundation, you are a philanthropist, HNI, startups, researchers, even if you are a school, you can come to this platform and get different kind of opportunities on this platform. And not only this, means we are trying by different efforts by which this platform can actually disseminate science, technology, and innovation in the country. We have made shows, reality shows with Amazon Prime. You might have heard about Mission Startup right now. 
This show has been launched by Alia Bhatt and the Principal Scientific Advisor last year. It is already there on the Amazon Prime. We got 1,500 startups and our focus is Tier 2 and Tier 3. We are not focusing on premier cities and tire. Our focus is Tier 2 and Tier 3. This show has been launched where we got 1,500 startups. 10 startups co-founders has been selected and they have gone through different sessions and uh, different challenges. How it is a fish in a bowl kind of concept where other startups can learn about this. So it's an ecosystem which we have developed and next session we are trying to work on deep tech technologies with the Amazon. Netflix we have collaborated and they have come uh, to us to find the innovations and innovators. They have shortlisted 10 plus innovators. We have made short films on innovation and innovators. And these films we are launching at International Film Fair Awards. So in June we have launched many of the films at International Film Fair Awards in Mumbai. With uh, J JLF, which is known for arts creativity, we are working on Be Inspired Science Series, where we are giving a platform for researchers and startups to talk about their innovations to, uh, to the world. With Sunset TV, which cover our parliament, they are covering innovations and the success stories on the platform which is coming out. And they are showcasing these videos in our parliament during the break hours to the MPs. So that's how, so that they can also know what is happening in innovations. We have, so there are many media channel partners which are partnering, partnering us to basically disseminate thank you, uh, the thank science you, and technology.